Today on Premiere Test Drive, we're taking the plugin Transcriptive for a spin. Transcriptive is a new tool from Digital Anarchy available on aescripts.com that allows you to take transcriptions and link them to the media in your project. It provides a seamless way of sending your material to a professional online transcription service in the background and returning it in minutes, loading it into your project. What makes this plugin unique is not only does it provide word processor functionality right within Premiere to make fixes to the file, it also links itself to the word of the media in your project. I'll show you different ways you can create a transcript, as well as giving a sneak peek of a new tool called Power Search, also by Digital Anarchy, due to be released soon, that works really well with Transcriptive. Let's get started. So Transcriptive comes in as a plugin extension. So it's under Window Extensions, and there we find Transcriptive. And it comes, I, I've got it already loaded up here, but it comes as a floating panel and you can dock it wherever you like, like, uh, like any of these panels in Premiere. So it comes up with a uh, blank document. It's, it looks and it essentially does work like a word processor once we get things loaded in here. So the first thing you're going to have to do when you launch Transcriptive for the first time is it requires you to log in to your transcriptive account with your email and a password and obviously if you don't have a an account yet you can create one by going to the create and filling in all the information the next thing you need to do is go to the drop down menu and you have to select speech engine setup the way transcriptive works is it ties itself in the background to two of the main transcription speech engines, if you will. One is Speechmatics and the other is Watson. Now you'll see me referring to both, but for these demonstrations, I'll, I'll show you both, but I will be working primarily with Speechmatics because it is a much more accurate translator, if you will. You'll see Speechmatics here, and I've, I've blurred this out for obvious reasons. Uh, it's my user ID and my authorization token, because what I did here and what you will need to do, these will be blank for you, but you'll need to go to Speechmatics and speechmatics.com and enable an account. And then you will get sent an authorization token, and that's what you put in here, and you confirm it with your email, and then you're good to go with Speechmatics. The reason for creating an account with Speechmatics and with Watson is so that you can use their translation service. And that's the thing that some people might get confused about. Well, why am I paying the money for Transcriptive and then I got to pay more money to get the translation done? Transcriptive is not a translation service. It will take translations and it ties it to the video, which I'm going to show you in a minute. And it does a really good job of working with Speechmatics and Watson in the background and loading, automatically loading in the translation that gets returned. So in the case of Speechmatics, Watson, a little bit different. This requires you to create an IBM Bluemix account. So you'll go to this active link and you set up your account much in the same way you do with Speechmatics and you enter in a credit card and then you'll need to select upgrade on the IBM Bluemix website. So if we go there and you'll see once you've created an account, you'll need to go to the upgrade option and enter in a credit card. The reason for this is Watson gives you, I believe it's like a thousand uh, minutes or something like that. And then beyond that, it will start charging you for the translations that you're doing. So Speechmatics gives you, I believe it's 60 free minutes, at which point beyond that, it will start to charge you the 0 0.07 cents a minute for the translation. Now the big difference between the two of these, and it is a big difference as I've been working with it and also through Digital Anarchy, they um, they seem to be in step with this. Speechmatics is much more accurate than Watson. I'll demonstrate both but and, you, and you'll see what you get back. Um, but Speechmatics pretty much is the go-to in, in this case. Okay, so once you've got that set up, then Transcriptive is ready to go. So there are several different ways that we can 
get transcription for our video material. Now I'm going to show you the first one is if I have an edited cut. This is um, an interview that I cut together for a series I did, uh, a music series that I did a few years ago. So we've got an interview with Michael McDonald and we want to run a transcript on this. So transcriptive knows what is loaded in the timeline so that if we, and it tells us there's a status bar at the top right here, it tells us it's ready to transcribe. So meaning it recognizes there is a, um, a sequence here that is ready to be transcribed. So if we click the transcribe button at this point, up pops a dialog box and it gives us the name just to confirm what it is we're working with here. The length of the sequence, which you want to make sure that uh, you don't have any in and out points because transcriptive will only translate between an in and out points. So this is important just to pay attention to. Our sequence here is five and a half minutes. And it also tells us, you'll notice here, because I've been using Speechmatics and testing it out, that I've used my 60 minutes already. And now it's telling me that I have an insufficient balance of credits. So I need to go to Speechmatics and purchase some credits. Okay, so I just went to Speechmatics, I logged in and I purchased credits. Now you, you will notice that in Speechmatics, they have a minimum charge of 10 pounds. So I purchased 10 pounds of credits, which gave me a thousand credits. So when we go to the transcribe button now, you'll see that it, instead of saying I have insufficient, it says charges from Speechmatics may apply. And it's saying for this five minute sequence, it's gonna take 33 credits. So I'm well within. And you see down here, it shows the available credits. And here's the Dropbox for selecting Speechmatics. We'll, we'll show Watson in a second here. We'll keep it at Speechmatics. We'll leave everything else the same because this is an English dialogue. And we have two speakers here. We have the host and we have Michael McDonald. So we're gonna keep it at two speakers. And we have identify questions selected here. We can do that so it can add punctuation in for us, the appropriate punctuation. Leave align current text off. I will show you this feature uh, shortly. So when you say continue, it makes a FLAC file, a FLAC file, and sends it to Speechmatics in the background. And this dialog box is really just waiting for um, Speechmatics to return the translation. And you see the status bar up here it tells us exactly that, waiting for Speechmatics. I find it does it does a pretty quick job of returning it and it will just pop up here when it's complete. It will also, because you've logged in with your account information, it will also send you an email. You'll get an email at the exact same time when it sends this transcription so that you have a second copy of it. It's not just embedded within your uh, Premiere project. It is also emailed to you separately as a text file. So there, that, that took about 40 seconds to transcribe you know, just under a minute. So not too bad for a five and a half minute uh, sequence. So this is what we get. We get a word processor style display of the dialogue for our sequence. Now, like all translation services, it's not always perfect. And so the first step you will likely need to do is go through the transcription and change words as it's required. And transcriptive has a number of key punctuation and navigation tools to make it very quick to go through this and correct any errors. And the thing that's really cool about transcriptive is working inside this panel, of course at the bottom we have a we have a play bar. It will highlight our words along when it plays the timeline. So if I press play, Michael McDonald, my friend, taking it to the streets. What a performance. What a performance. All right, so really, really handy to be able to go through and track the words along with the video. Now, if we go back to the top up here, uh, we can see, first of all, his, his last name is incorrect. So there's two modes in transcriptive. The mode we're automatically set in right now is called the tracking mode. And this allows us to add in things like punctuation and we can uh, split lines and that sort of thing. And we can it's designed in such a way that we can do it all from the keyboard and we don't really have to touch the mouse. We, and, and so when you get really comfortable with all the shortcut keys, it can go pretty quickly. 
So you see along the top here, there are a number of keys and you can press these if you want, but it's really designed for you to use the shortcut keys. And the shortcut keys are indicated when you hover over on the uh, description here. So you can see what all the different shortcut keys are. And at the bottom is a navigation as well. So you can go to the, uh, the previous speaker, the previous sentence, previous word, and uh, the next word, next sentence, and next speaker. And you also have uh, the option to play in one, one and a half, or two times speed once you get really quick with your keyboard shortcuts. And this just realigns the sync with the playhead. So here we are at the beginning of our, t of our transcription. And we want to change his name. It's not McDonald, it's McDonald. So let's click on that name and I'm going to press the enter key. That puts me into editing mode, as you can see on the top right there. So now I can just, it's a word processor right now. So I can just, that, that word is highlighted. I can now just change the word. And to get back out of word processing in uh, the editing mode and back into tracking mode, I press the escape key and that puts us back there. So that word has now been changed. So now we're at the word McDonald. I want to add a period at the end of that. So period is very, very simple. It is just a period. That's, that's the shortcut key. So it adds in the period and automatically the next word gets capitalized. So let's go through and see how quickly we can do this. I haven't worked with this too much myself, so uh, let's see how quickly we can make this. My friend. So let's put another period at the end of friend, and then go to the next word, which is just the right arrow key. And this is this is actually taking taking it. So let's just change that to taken, and then escape, and we're back out. And then we press the play spacebar again. Taking it to the streets. What a performance. What a performance. Now, first of all, that was, was that the first hit you had with the doobies? It was. Okay, now you can see, I'm going to go back a few words here. Doobies should have a question mark there. So with that word highlighted, I can just press the question mark, and there it goes. And then play. Doobies? It was. It was the first, uh, actually, uh, not the first thing I cut with the doobies, but it was our first, first big hit. Yeah. Okay, so you see there that the host jumped in here on first big hit. So that's actually his line, even though it's now associated with speaker two. And maybe this is a good time I point out that the transcription comes back trying to identify the different speakers. So we can go to the top menu again, and we can go to speaker management. And it allows us to change the name of the speaker. So speaker one, let's highlight that, his name is actually Carbon. And speaker two is Michael. So now when we save that, it updates everything here. But Michael was talking here and then Carbon jumped in. So we need to be able to split this. So to create a second line while we're in tracking mode, not in the editing mode, while we're in the tracking mode with that, with that word selected, I would press Option or Alt and the down arrow. Now we'll have to pull the pull down menu to Carbon. Carbon's the one that said that. First, First big hit, yeah. And then on the word single, single, highlight single, and we're gonna do the same thing again. Option down arrow, and we'll change this to Michael. Single that we have. The, the song has a, a guy. So you get the idea. You can go through fairly quickly, highlight certain words. You can change certain words. Uh, like down here, he says pop art. Uh, it's actually pop R&B. Pop R &B so we would go into, we press the return key and I can just do R&B and press escape to get back out. Now, if you find, I don't have it in this transcript, but if you find there is a particular word that repeatedly is incorrect. Let's say, I, I, let's give the example of doobies. Um, let's say that that word was actually wrong. I'm going to say doobies and it's going to highlight the two instances in this transcript that, that word appears. And we can go to the different instances with these arrow keys. If there were several more down the document, it'll take us there. And we can choose to replace that word with something else. So if we decide to replace it and call it 
doobies. Let's say we we do that. And then we replace all. And we say yes. And so there we go. We've changed it to doobies. We can we of course can do the reverse. And get it back to the way it was. And there you go. So that's what that feature is for, and that can be really handy if the translation continuously hears a particular word incorrect. We can change them all at once with that dialog box. Now up on the top left here, we have a group transcript by speaker button. What this will do is you'll notice the tra translation from Speechmatics comes back dividing every pretty what it thinks is every every sentence into its own line. And so by pressing this, it will group all of the sentences from one speaker at a time. So when we press that button, it now looks more like a formal script, if you will. So there we have Michael talking and then Carvin talks, although this would be incorrect because um, Carvin says, yeah, and then we would need to split that. So now that's actually Michael. Okay, so that's how that works. It's actually a little easier to see, in my opinion, when you work in this mode, but you can then group them together and then export out the transcript that way if that's what you want. Now back under the flyout menu here, we can choose, next one down, we can choose to delete this transcript. Now you recall that I had said earlier that once you get a transcript done, it gets emailed to you, which uh, I got an email in the background, so it's sitting there. By deleting it, I would be deleting the transcript that's tied to this sequence. I can always re-import it from that email that I was sent. But let's not delete that in this case. Instead, I want to show you if I was to take the sequence here and duplicate it, let's do a copy and paste. And let's title this, I'll just call it Watson at the end here, because we're going to translate this. Now I've got my original, and now I've got this new one mm -hmm. called Watson. You'll see that tr the transcriptive automatically popped up a transcription associated with this sequence. It's the identical one with our first sequence, but they are two different transcriptions being applied to the sequence. In other words, under Watson here, if I decided I want to delete this transcript, it's deleting it only for this sequence. Now there's no transcription tied to this sequence, but there still is with our first sequence. It's still here. So let's go to Watson. And now we're going to, we'll go to transcribe and we'll do the pull down for Watson this time. And as I mentioned earlier, Watson gives you a thousand minutes per month. So the balance due is going to be zero because we're still well within those 1000 minutes. And it shows us the total minutes we're going to be translating. Same thing up here. And once again, it's English. We're going to include two speakers and identify questions. We'll say continue and let transcriptive send it in the background and we'll wait for this transcription to come through and here we got the transcription back but let's see how Watson did in the translation Michael McDonald my friend taking it to the streets what a performance oh, what a performance you. now first of all that was was that the first hit you had with the doobies it was. It was the first. Uh, so you see, uh, it's done a pretty decent job, got his name right, um, of translation, but it didn't do a very good job there identifying the new speaker. Yeah, with the doobies? It will. So let's select that and with our Alt Option down arrow, create a new speaker. It was. It was the first. Uh, actually, uh, not the first thing I cut with the doobies, but it was our first. first and obviously, I got the doobies wrong here. So we would need to change that. First big hit, yeah, uh, single that we had. 
the, the song has a, a gospel. And didn't identify the new speaker here. So it's struggling a little bit, particularly in identifying the new speakers. A gospel feel. Did you come up with that as far as the, the, the intro and all that kind yeah, of stuff? Yeah, yeah, and, and, and very much was. So we would need to do quite a bit of editing on this uh, in order to get this into shape. So it really is clear that Speechmatics is the better engine. In, uh, you'll find it probably in most cases that it is the better engine. But Watson is a lot cheaper if you are going to be transcribing enough material that you get into having to having to pay for it. Watson can be cheaper as 0 0.02 cents a minute versus the 0 0.07 cents that Speechmatics is. So we'll close that one down. We're going to work with the Speechmatics uh, sequence, and you'll see that the transcriptive panel automatically updates depending on what sequence we're working with. It loads that automatically loads that transcription into its panel. Now let's look at a few of the options here on the flyout menu. So I showed you delete transcript. It has an import transcript. So if somebody, so if you've used an external transcription service and they provided you a, a text file, a rich text file, and there's a lot of different formats that this will import, uh, you can bring that in and then you can get it aligned with your video. And I'll show you how to do that. Now you may be familiar that if, if you upload videos to YouTube, that YouTube automatically, once it's uploaded, does an auto transcribing of your video. And in my experience, it's actually, it's actually pretty accurate. The only thing it, it, it doesn't do well is punctuation. But that's something that Transcriptive here, as you've seen, uh, can do very quickly. So if you wanted to use a free transcription service, uh, you can export out your material, upload it to YouTube, and then you can export out an SRT file. So here I am in my YouTube channel. I've, I've uploaded the cut to YouTube. And if I go into Edit Video and go to the Subtitles section, and, uh, and you probably want to set this to, to private. This one's set to private, therefore uh, no one can view it because you're just using it temporarily as a translation service and then you'll delete it. So it has automatically created this subtitle file. I did not transcribe this. I did not upload tra transcription at all. This is what YouTube and Google have returned to me. Michael McDonald. So here's here's the whole translation here. And if I want to edit, I can get it in edit mode and I can edit the transcription. Now you see in the actions bar, uh, we can download an SRT file. And by downloading that, we'll download it to our hard drive. Then back in Premiere, let's go to import transcript. Choose an importer. We're going to import an SRT file, which is what the YouTube video gave us. Browse to where your folder is. And here it is here. We'll leave it at auto detect of the character wording. Leave everything as is. Just select import. Now we've imported that transcript from YouTube. Let's see. And you'll see that Michael McDonald, my friend, taking it to the streets. What a performance. What a performance. Now, first of all, that Now you'll see it's not tied word to, to Now you see it's not tied word to word the way the Speechmatics transcription or the Watson came in. But that can be fixed. Since we have this transcription loaded in and associated with this sequence, we can then go transcribe, make sure we use Speechmatics, and at the bottom, this is where the align current text comes in, because it will take the current text and it will align it to the video word for word. So when we say continue, And this, because it doesn't have to do a full translation, will not be as expensive as if it were doing it from scratch. So you still do kind of have to pay for it, but it is cheaper. So if you have a lot of work to do, you can do it that way. So now we got it returned. Michael McDonald, my friend, taking it to the streets. What a performance. What a performance. Now, first of all, that was, was that? Now you see that does work tied to each word. However, you probably have noticed a significant problem. The fact is speakers are not identified in this. So even though we had the ignore speakers turned off, 
it isn't identifying speakers for us. So that is a limitation of doing it this way. So you'll see that by choosing import transcript, it overwrote the Speechmatics transcript that I did have. Now if I press undo, we can go back to the level that we had. And there we go. Now we're back to our original Speechmatics transcript. If I'd deleted it completely, I can, of course, go and import the transcript that was sent to me via email. Now, if I don't want to rely on the email that I was sent, I can export it. If I've gone through this whole document, got it exactly the way I want it, we can use the export feature at the bottom. We can choose what style of exporting text file gets created, and there's several here that uh, can be worked from. But what is also really handy is if I go down a couple here to sequence markers, if I export this transcription as sequence markers, I include the speakers, say export, and let's say 0.1 in between seconds in between markers, say export, automatically I now have markers for each one of these lines connected to and if you go in to the markers themselves and press the option key and then click on a marker and drag it out we zoom in here we can see the dialog here and if I double click on the marker it pops open the marker dialog box and you can see it gives us the text right here in the marker box now my only issue with this is as you can see here uh, it does give us the wording but it it plays in the name at the head of this right here I don't want to read that I just want to read the material from the comments so it would be a nice feature to be able to just remove that piece and, and I could remove it here and then I would just have my wording. And you can do that for any one of these markers, of course, stretch them out and, and read what the dialogue is at that particular point. But you'll notice that the transcriptive panel does not update when I move through the actual Premiere sequence. Transcriptive only works one direction. It works by when you're in transcriptive, and I'm playing here, that the, it will interact with the sequence. So I click on a word, it jumps to that part in the sequence. But it doesn't go the other way. So okay. Premiere, I can be moving around, it does not update my transcription. So that's something also to be aware of. Now where something like these sequence markers could be handy, let's say you're doing a, a motion graphic kinetic text animation. So in the example, let's see here. Um, I've got this bit of audio here. They say be a good girl, get good grades, be popular. So what I would like to do <laughs> is I want to create a, a kinetic text motion graphic piece from this audio. So with this sequence selected, I'm going to transcribe this audio. I'll use Speechmatics once again. It's only it's only one speaker. I can select to turn that off. Say continue. This isn't very long, it should return fairly quickly. So there you see I got the transcription back. So with this being a kinetic text animation that I'm going for, I'd like each one of these words to be on their own line. So if I just select the next word here and press the Alt Option down key and keep doing this, and go through the entire document this way and I won't do I won't do everything I'll just do the first few lines here and then select export and we're going to do sequence markers say export and now it creates all of our markers on our timeline now you see on the ones where we did for every single word here they say be a good girl so now those are exactly lined up with the words. 
so that what I can do, I can take this sequence, and if I were to do that for every single word for the entire sequence, I can then do a dynamic link by selecting the sequence. I'll have to put a piece of video in here in order to invoke the uh, replace After Effects composition. Send it to After Effects, and then I can animate with these markers set in place for each one of the words, so that my final animation, I can come out with my final animation. They say be a good girl. Get good grades, be popular. So there you get the idea of how it can be used very effectively for a kinetic text type treatment. So back to Michael McDonald here. So what else can we do with this? Well, if we go to export, we also have the ability to export clip markers. And so instead of the markers being attached to the sequence, the markers will be attached to the actual clips themselves. So I, of course, got to wondering how well the translation services would work in English that isn't as clear. In this example here, uh, I have two people having a discussion in a crowded Scottish pub. Not only is there noise around them, but our Glaswegian here is it got a very thick Scottish accent and can be hard to translate that. So I wanted to see how well speech medics would handle this. There's lots to be proud of in Glasgow. The capital cities are full of people from all over. Right. But Glasgow's full of Glaswegians. People know where they're from and they're proud of where they're from. So it's... And in addition, I've got music sneaking in underneath here to complicate it. Yeah. It's just an honest thing. It's just genuine. Yeah, this city has zero tolerance for bullshit. Okay, so let's, we've got this sequence loaded up. Let's see what it looks like when we transcribe this one with speech Maddox. And here we got it back. Let's see how it did. There's lots to be proud of in Glasgow. The capital cities are full of people from all over. Right. But Glasgow's full of Glaswegians. People know where they're from and they're proud of where they're from, so it's... Yeah. Okay, so clearly so there are some issues uh, with that. So it's it's obvious that the more clear a speaker is and the better recording it has, it's going to do a much better job. So it really goes without saying, but I just was curious as to how well it would do it. In addition, I started thinking about, well, how would it do with, say, lyrics of music? So in the Michael McDonald um, example, there's a live performance um, that I cut for this. Now, there is a section in the song later on where the backup singer takes over and she does some improvisation. And I thought maybe there's music there, but maybe it might be a little more clear what she's saying. Sorry. So let's... So I'm just going to divide this sequence up at this point because I don't want to I don't want to translate all of it. Okay, so let's just use a part of that, and we're going to translate this and see what we get back. So this is what I got back. Nothing. So it didn't so clearly it didn't detect any voice. So it doesn't seem to work with music uh, translation. We could try Watson but I I know Watson isn't going to do any better either. Uh so you're kind of out of luck if you want to translate anything having to do with music or singing or that sort of thing. It's really for dialogue. But what if we're not dealing with the English language. What if we're dealing with French, for example? So let's see how we can handle that. So if we go to transcribe, and you'll see there is a language pull down for Speech Maddox, and Speech Maddox does cover quite a few languages here. Uh, this one is actually uh, French. It's uh, French Canadian, but uh, there is no pull down for French Canadian the way there is in YouTube. But they're f pretty similar, so we will use French. 
we'll deselect the identify questions because that's only available for English. And it's only one speaker, so we can just deselect this. Okay, and this is what we got returned back. Let's see how it did. C'est définitivement pas le mot que tu veux entendre et c'est probablement la pire journée de ma vie. Looks pretty good to me. I don't speak French. So, but it looks like it did a pretty pretty decent job. It was recorded very well. She speaks very clearly and this transcription looks pretty accurate to me. Of course, you'd want somebody to to double check it for you, but there you go. It does do a number of different languages as well. If we choose export and select speech analysis what this will do if we select the, the clip now and load it into the viewer and go to metadata it has included her transcription into the metadata of this clip under speech analysis and the great thing about this is then this is tied to the clip, so if I hand the project off to somebody else, they don't need to have transcriptive because it's loaded into the speech analysis of the clip itself. And they have this material available to them. And I'll show you shortly how this can be used with another new tool that Digital Anarchy has, uh, has created. But for now, just be aware that that speech analysis is now sitting right inside that clip. So we'll go back to our main sequence here. Just close that down open up transcriptive again still working on export if we select export again and choose an, as an exporter the SEMPTY TT this is a recognized closed captioning format so if we select that and we can set these parameters I'm going to leave them at their default for now so we'll export it out it's going to ask us where we want it and we'll create this and it's going to create an XML file I've already done it previously, so I'll just cancel this out. I won't overwrite it, but I'll show you how we can use it. So if I go to import and I point to that to that XML file, it comes in identified as a video file, but we, if we take it and drag it over top of our existing project, we now have our closed caption system. If you have under your Premiere window under closed caption display to have it enabled. You'll be able to see the closed captioning. Was was that the first hit you had with the doobies? It was. It was the first, uh, actually. And then if you go to your captions panel, you have options if you select it to change it, the the appearance and, the, and how things come on, that sort of thing. You have full access over the captioning. So this transcription has been now changed into closed captioning for you. All right, I'll just take that off for now. Now that's how we work with transcribing material in a sequence. But you're not limited to having to put things in a sequence in order to have them transcribed. Once again on the flyout menu, we have a batch section here. So we can choose batch files and up comes a dialog box. We can choose to, from the finder level, select a number of clips and have them transcribed. And we can select them all and they would do in a batch or we can select just one, say open. And what happens is it launches Media Encoder and it will export out a FLAC file, automatically gets put in your documents folder. They delete and these files will be deleted after seven days, by the way. So it's not going to completely clog up your system. And it will encode this FLAC file. It will send it to the background, get it transcribed and return it. So it creates a FLAC file here, and we can send it to Speechmatics. The total length is one minute, so we say OK. So it shows you up here the batch was successful. It doesn't actually import that file, but we can go and we can direct ourselves to where that file was, import that file, and if we look bring it to the source monitor and we look at the metadata and look under speech analysis, we can see the transcription has been placed in the clip itself. So wherever that clip gets sent, 
the transcription follows right along with it. In addition, if we then take that clip and make a sequence out of it, and then go to transcriptive, you can see that the transcription has been loaded in from the speech analysis. It seems like every single day we're grabbing one of these to clean up a mess. Big messes, small messes, all kinds of messes. Okay. And we can do the same thing if it isn't just in individual clips. We can go batch folder and select that entire folder, say open it, and it would do the same thing for the entire folder. And a third option is batch project. So, for example, let's say that I had some footage here that I wanted to transfer. Let's say I have these clips. Okay, so let's say I want to transcribe all these clips. The way transcriptive works is you create a new folder, you call it transcriptive. I'm going to put it at the root of this project. And then what you would do is you copy whatever files you want to have transcribed into this transcriptive folder. Then when you go to transcriptive and you go batch project, it will open media encoder, make the flag files, and then the pop-up box will come up for speechmatics allowing you to send it for transcription i'll stop this because that's just a demonstration for now but that's how you can do it and then you can just take these files and you can put them back where you had them so that's how you can get transcriptions for all of your material and how you can edit them now there is another tool that digital anarchy uh, will soon be providing and i have a copy of it here and it's under extensions as well it's called power search what this powerful plugin will do is it will search through all the media that's in your current active project and allows you to search for words at a clip level. So to show Power Search, I'm going to just open up a uh, new project that's quite a bit, that's fairly small because it can take a little while for the Power Search to uh, index everything in a project. So I just created a new project here called a Power Search. I'll just copy over some media. Actually, what I'll do is I'll just copy this, yeah, this sequence over into the Power Search project. Now, with this project active, I think I'll close down this project so there's no confusion. Now, with this project, then you notice that even though I copied and pasted this, the transcription comes along with it. Go to Power Search. I'm going to index this project. And after doing the power search, this is what you get back, which looks like a whole lot of nothing. But if you go to the top here, and the second button in is View Data Table. So if we select that, we can see that these are the clips that have been indexed by Power Search. And you have the option here of expanding this. Uh, it's divided up into five pages. So we can go through the different pages here of the different clips. Or we can select how many rows we can see and we can just scroll down and see the different clips that have been indexed. These are the filter features that this index search has used to build its index. So let's say we want to search for the word doobies. Type that in and press search. And we get returned to us. The word doobies appears under a speech analysis and it also appears under markers. So if we select doobies under speech analysis, it's going to pop us in my timeline to that point at which that word is spoken. That was, was that the first hit you had with the doobies? It was. It was. So it's not exactly to the word, but it's very, very close it gets us right in the ballpark of where that word is. And the second time the word was spoken as well, just a little bit afterwards. Not the first thing I cut with the doobies, but it was... So there it is. So that's under speech analysis because that transcription has been loaded into the metadata of this clip. And that's how we can search for words at a clip level. 
Now, if you don't have speech analysis run on these clips and it doesn't exist in the metadata, but let's say that we did run the transcription for this sequence and it appears in our markers, and so the transcription exists in all of these markers, this selection will take us to where that word appears at the marker level. Now that's the beginning of this sentence, so it takes us to the beginning of where that sentence is in the transcription. So this power search can be a really powerful way to find the words that you're looking for, and it returns results at different levels, whether they be by speech analysis or markers. Now what if you added some more clips to this project? Well, at the top right here, it gives you the option to re-index the project. So it keeps the current indexing, but adds, it looks for the new material and adds it to this index. And so you don't have to run it again. You can, of course, hit the save option. So this is a new plugin that is coming from Digital Anarchy. You can see how well it ties itself in with transcriptive itself. Transcriptive, we can create a transcription of our sequence or our clips. And then through the export feature, we can export them as speech analysis and apply them to all of our clips. And then we open Power Search and index the project. And then we have at our fingertips, we can search for any word that was spoken in our project and it'll appear here with a live link to that spot. I don't know about you, but I've worked on many, many projects over the years, particularly television work that has had volumes and volumes of material and I'm trying to find where the person said a particular thing. And you, you know that they said it, but you're digging through. It's not like it's a visual thing that you can scrub through and find the shot of that building you're looking for. You're trying to find a word. But this allows you to find those words quickly and easily. It also provides a cost-efficient method of supplying closed captioning. Combine this with the new Power Search tool, and you have a system set up that enables you to jump straight to the content you're looking for at the click of a button. Check it out on aescripts.com. Thank you.